Hi, it's Mr. Riggs. Today we're going to play with some food as we learn how to extract DNA from a living thing. Now you might be asking, what is DNA? And that's a really good question. DNA is short for a big, long scientific word, deoxyribonucleic acid. Now DNA is the basic instructions or blueprints, if you will, that every cell in a living being has that tells it what it's going to look like, um, how big it's going to be, what color. For instance, your DNA in all of your cells will determine if you're going to be five foot nine or if you're going to be six foot four. Uh, the DNA in your cells will uh, determine if your eye color is green or if it's blue or brown. Um, DNA in your body determines if your hair color is going to be blonde, if it's going to be brown, if you're going to have red hair, or if later in life you'll have no hair. So, how can I show you how to get DNA out of a leaf of spinach? It's actually pretty simple and it's very easy to do in your own home. Now normally, DNA, you, it, they're so small that you can't see it with the naked eye. So we are going to use some common household products such as salt, some meat tenderizer, um, water, cold water, and rubbing alcohol to help draw out the DNA um, and bond it together so we can see it better. Okay, now let's get started. The first step that we're going to do is we're going to blend together about, let's see, exactly one cup of cold water. We'll just put that in first. We need one fourth a teaspoon of salt. Got my measuring spoon here. Let's see if I can do this without spilling the salt. Ooh. Okay, add that to our water. <clears throat> and then I'm going to put in half a cup of spinach. It looks like a lot of spinach, but it's pretty leafy, and voluminous, and I'm going to put that into our blender here, that big leaf right there. Now normally I would tell you to eat your spinach because it helps to grow up strong and healthy, but when we use food for a science experiment or demonstration, we never want to eat it, okay, especially since we're going to be using things like rubbing alcohol, um, meat tenderizer, and we'll be using some dish soap later on too. Okay, I'm gonna blend this, it might get a little loud. And we want it to get to, uh, to where it's a soupy kind of mixture. Here we go. <laughs> It's pretty soupy to me. Now my next step is to pour it from the blender bottle here into a glass measuring cup. And the reason that we want to use a glass measuring cup is later we need to see exactly how much mixture is that we've got here because the amount of rubbing alcohol we use will depend on how much we have here. So the glass measuring cup has markings along the side like one cup one and a half cup, two cups, on up to four cups. So it's gonna make it really easy for us to see just how much we need to pour in later. Okay, take the lid off here. Okay, I'm going to use a strainer because we only want the liquid. We don't want any of the little chunks and little bits of spinach that maybe did get blended up into the mixture. So I'm going to Carefully pour it in here. And let that slowly pouring through there. Now I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but there's actually quite a bit of spinach that didn't get chopped up small enough to go through the, the uh, holes in the strainer. And those bits we don't want. That's, um, those are gonna be too big for us to really see the DNA from. So I'm gonna leave that to the side there. 
<clears throat> okay. Now we've got our our mixture here into the measuring cup, and we're going to want to add in two tablespoons of dish soap. So I'm going to go get that real quick, and then when we come back, we're going to add the dish soap in. Okay, we're back. I'm going to add now two tablespoons of dish soap. Now the dish soap is going to help us to more easily access the DNA from our mixture. There's one. Now this whole demonstration that we're doing today would be a great starting point for a science fair project. So one of the things you would want to find out is just how does the dish soap help us act, access the DNA from this mixture. That's something you'll definitely want to know when you, if you decide to do this for a science fair. Okay, I think I've got that evenly mixed in there. Okay, I'm going to set this aside. <laughs> you see it's a little goopy. Okay, now we need to let this sit for 10 minutes because the dish soap needs to, to do its work to help draw out those DNA strands. So I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes and then when we come back we're going to take a look at our mixture and then we're going to measure just how much um, rubbing alcohol we need to add to it. We'll see you back in 10 minutes. Okay, we're back. Um, our timer was set for 10 minutes while we let the dish soap work its magic. And now we are back to take the next step in our demonstration. Okay, so we have so far um, added to, we've blended up spinach, cold water uh, with a little bit of salt. We have strain, put it through a strainer to get the liquid out. We have uh, added in dish soap to help access that DNA from the base components of the, um, of the spinach. And now we are going to add in some meat tenderizer. The meat tenderizer is also gonna help draw out some of those DNA strands now that the uh, dish soap has had some time to, to do its work. You're gonna need about 1 16th a teaspoon of meat tenderizer. So I, I don't know about you, I don't have a 1 16th teaspoon um, here at home, but I've got a 1 8th teaspoon and I know for math class that 1 16th is half of 1 8th. So you're going to do half of a 1 8th teaspoon. I'm going to add it in slowly, spreading it around. And then I'm going to gently stir that mixture together. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to observe the mixture because I need to know how much liquid I have here in the, in the measuring cup. And if I were to look right here, we are just short of one cup. So we have, we have just about one cup of liquid here. Now what I need to do is I need to add in rubbing alcohol and I need an equal part rubbing alcohol to equal part mixture. So if I have if I have about one cup of mixture here in the measuring cup, I need about one cup of rubbing alcohol in there. So I've already got some poured in here. So I'm going to just a couple drops more. Okay. I am now going to slowly pour this in to my mixture, the rubbing alcohol. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to give it a good stir. Now the rubbing alcohol, its job is to kind of coax those DNA strands into um, bonding together. And hopefully what we'll see here at the end of our experiment are some cobweb-like DNA strands from our mixture. Okay, 
Now this needs to sit for another three minutes. So I will see you back here after my timer has gone off after three minutes. Okay, we're back. It's been three minutes. Now I have seen a change in my mixture. I don't know if we can see this on the camera. I don't want to move the cup because I don't want to disturb it. But hopefully you can see the cobwebby stuff, the particles sitting right there on the top of our mixture. That's the DNA that has been extracted from the spinach that we blended up. Um, I've got a Q-tip here and hopefully I can get that DNA to want to come with me. A piece of it broke off but you can probably see that DNA is kind of wrapped around that Q-tip there. So that's, that's, uh, that, those are the basic instructions for spinach right here on our Q-tip. So all those, um, that DNA in those cells tells spinach to grow nice and leafy and uh, gives it instructions for um, how to grow and thrive and be green and healthy and nutritious for you. Now, how did that happen? Well, let's, let's take it a little bit step by step here. We, we, um, we used the cold water and blended up our spinach to help make our mixture. So what we did when we blended the spinach up was we broke down the spinach into its basic cell cellular components. And then we added the dish soap, which helped us to access the DNA and help to draw that DNA out from the basic um, components of the spinach cells. The meat tenderizer um, also helped to to further draw out more of the DNA strands. And then the rubbing alcohol that we added, um, which I don't know if you could see very well on the, on the camera here, but I noticed this um, during the, the uh, three minutes here that we were waiting. The, the rubbing alcohol um, helped to clump those DNA strands together so we could see that cobweb-like appearance floating here on the top of our mixture. Like I said, this would be a really good basic demonstration to consider for a science fair project. Um, of course, you'll want to go a little bit more in depth with the process and what's happening, such as what role does the dish soap, the meat tenderizer, and the rubbing alcohol play in helping to extract and then um, bond the DNA strands together. And then you might want to also consider um, explaining more in more detail what exactly DNA is and how does the body use DNA or the instructions um, to grow living things. Well that's been um, a life science demonstration. Again I'm Mr. Riggs and thank you for joining me today and uh, we'll see you next time. Hi it's Mr. Riggs here. Today we're going to play with a little bit of food for a life science demonstration. Did you know that you can actually extract DNA from just about any living thing in the comfort of your own home? Well, while that's true, we're going to focus on a plant because we don't want to get the kitchen messy with an animal or a human being. That might be a no-no. Um, sorry. <laughs>